Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, right behind you, sir. I was all right. You know, when I was in the military and I had to travel on official business, I had a budget that I had to stay within and it would be able to cover it. If I exceeded the per diem, it came out of my pocket. Just recently, Vice President Biden went to a meeting in Paris. And outside of his travel expenses, his hotel bill for one night, $585,000. Huh? Who's controlling this budget? What is Jim saying? Should do a Motel 6. That's what the media report is. We're trying to see what they're reporting on is a contract that the U.S. government signed with this hotel that seemed to almost be nonsensically large in terms of the number of people and the number of nights that they were going to be there. So this could be a document that actually reflects a, an outrageous upper limit just so nobody ran into the problems while they were there and the actual bill is going to come in at what you would expect an actual wow. bill uh, to come in. And, well, I mean, it's, going to be, it's going to be hundreds of thousands. I mean, not hundreds of thousands. It will be thousands and thousands because we're talking about an entourage of about 100 people. They're staying at incredibly nice in uh, Paris uh, Hotel. But this contract that the news outlets were reporting on covered a span of nights that was even longer than the times the vice president was in all of Europe. So unless he had an entourage of 100 people that was staying in Paris exclusively for those uh, uh, nine, nine nights, I think it was, it, it, the math can't work out. Uh, we will uh, follow up on that uh, as, uh, as government form and oversight committee, you can, uh, you can be assured. Is there silly stuff that goes on? There it is. We need to expose every single bit of silly thing, uh, silly, silly thing that goes on. But what I'll say to you is for the most part, uh, particularly today after we've had all the riff after riff and, 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 and cleaned up the, the process, most of these federal employees uh, that are operating at that level our folks who love their country and are absolutely trying to do things the, the best that they can. Going back to this gentleman's point about cut Congress first, uh, you may not know, we can cut the congressional uh, budget uh, each and every year. First year I was there, we cut it 5%. The next year we cut another 6%. This year we cut another 8%. Uh, percent. Our committees, the committees that are doing this oversight on, the, on, the, uh, on all other agencies, are now budgeted below their, their spending levels in 2005. Uh, our seventh district uh, budget below our spending levels in 2008. Uh, so we absolutely believe that thrift begins at home. What we are, what we're struggling with to bring those two questions together is kind of a unilateral disarmament. At the end of the day, my job is not to be a good Republican. My job is to be a good citizen and do my Article One responsibilities of doing oversight over the Article Two executive branch. It's not a Republican Democrat thing. Uh, it's a constitutional thing. If we cut Congress much more than the 20% we've already come down, we're going to begin to handicap ourselves in doing those things that the Constitution requires us uh, to do. At the same time, we've gone down uh, 20%. Uh, the executive branch has gone up uh, about 9% over that same uh, period of time. So my, my commitment to you uh, is that we will find out where those dollars are. I cannot believe it is as bad as they want to be. I want to believe the best about folks. I can't imagine they wasted that kind of money.